Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing. It is Thursday, the 18th of July. And it's a gruesome twosome once again. Uh, myself and uh, Stevie Clifford uh, on the Yorkie uh, to talk all things Rangers. How's it going, Stevie? Yeah, good, mate. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is well today. Um, just a quick word for our podcast sponsors before we get stuck into uh, the, Ranger, the, the Rangers news. Uh, not much is happening, it's fair to say, but uh, we'll try and, <laughs> try and get through uh, half an hour uh, talking about uh, all things Rangers. Before we do that, uh, MPH Boilers are our podcast sponsors, folks. Uh, you know the goal <laughs> by now, the boiler is on the blink. These are the guys to call the award-winning family-run business covering all of mainland Scotland. They've got those Wiesman boilers on offer still. Right, uh, I think what we'll do is, because there is a distinct lack of uh, proper news uh, to discuss, uh, we will uh, invite you to send your questions in, folks. Uh, pretty much what we do uh, with uh, the usual Q&A show on the, the, the Extra channel. Um, so if you want to send your question in, myself and Stevie will get through as many as we possibly can. Uh, we'll touch on, um, I've seen a, a player that has been linked. He was linked earlier in the window before we get stuck in, Stevie. I've seen it on Twitter this morning as NM gets in touch. It says, I've seen on Twitter this morning, we have agreed personal terms with Triori from Ferenc Varos. We just need to sell someone <laughs> To pay for him. Now, it's a player, Adama Traore. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, he was linked uh, earlier on in the window. 29-year-old winger. Mali International. Plays his football in Hungary. Uh, reported fee, I think a few weeks ago, it was said that it would cost around about 4 million euros. There is a video I did, folks, with a former Ferenc Faros uh, player who spoke in great detail about him. Uh, I'd urge you to check out on the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm not too sure how credible uh, the source is uh, online this morning, Stevie, but he has he is someone that's been linked before. It's a winger. I would be a bit apprehensive about paying that amount of money for a 29-year-old, I've got to admit. Don't know too much about him. Uh, he is a decent enough player. Had injury problems last season, by all accounts. I think he missed about half the season. So, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure about this one. It's an absolute no for me, Derek, mm -hmm. straight away. 29 years old, allegedly, so this is an alleged deal, and it's a no from me on the, the basis of what people are saying, £4 million, 29-year-old, or €4 million, Euros, 29-year-old, and stuff like that. Have we learned absolutely nothing then on that basis? Because this is yeah. what we did last summer, and look what we're, we're dealt with now. So an absolute no. Um, I wouldn't even consider it. And, um, yeah, I, I appreciate the links aren't exactly strong. Um, it's just rumours at the moment, so um, we can only judge it on that. But sometimes these rumours and the weird rumours are the weirdest ones. I was a bit um, pleased and relaxed about it when it says that we need to sell a player in order to fund it. Well, that's not happening anytime soon, is it? So, um, I think we're safe here. Yeah, so... Um, Nah, it's a, it's a no from me, Derek, definitely not. We, we need to get away. You know, if the deal was right, then I would possibly change my mind and have a look at it closer and stuff like that. But we should not be spending £4 million on anybody like that. It's just, it's not where I want us to be. And we need to learn lessons from previous mistakes in the transfer window. He would he would be a lot of money and he would be a lot of wages, I'd imagine, as well, Derek. So uh, it's, a, it's a sharp no from me, I'm afraid. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's not someone that, that I'm uh, overly excited about. Uh, Aldo agrees as well, says 100% Stevie uh, on that one. So, uh, yeah, uh, it was a player, as I mentioned, folks, uh, he was linked uh, previously in the window. There has been uh, numerous players linked with moves to Rangers. It has gone uh, relatively quiet, it's fair to say, with regards to incomings. There's a great piece, incidentally, on the website that Joshua uh, is wrote uh, just on the comments from Philip Clement at the uh, summer training camp over in the Netherlands uh, when Chris spoke to him and on the transfer issue looking to towards the long term as opposed to his comments uh, uh, when he said that the easy thing would just be bringing experienced players but that is a short term ism so uh, it's, a, it's a great piece in depth go and check it out uh, I'd urge you to do so uh, I think we've seen that Stevie with the, the signings that have brought in so far uh, we just touched on there we don't want to be spending a lot of money on a, a 29 year old the guys that have been brought in are for the long term with the view of selling him on for profit I'd imagine yeah, that's definitely it. Um, as I said yesterday, and I think we need to realise this, or we think we need to 
keep focused on this, and I certainly do because I was talking about it the other day, that just because of the way it is at this moment and the feeling around certain things, it doesn't mean the business we've done so far isn't good business or it yeah. isn't promising business. You know, Clement and Coppin have got history in buying players, developing them, selling them on for big money. It's happened um, fairly regularly at their clubs before. So, you know, Coppin was involved even in bringing Malik Tillman and stuff to, to PSV and things like that. So they've got an eye for a player. They, they know how to do it. And yet it's a different level because even at their clubs like PSV, they can spend the bigger money on getting these players in at youth level so they can get a better standard. But at Rangers, they've, they've maybe had to go down a few levels and try and find these players to try and move them on. But there's no doubt in my mind that they've, they've signed the likes of Hefty and Igamani and, and Siala because they are the ones that they think they can turn into something. So I'm still as prop as, what's the word? I'm still as um, hopeful and still as optimistic as I am when they first arrived that they'll just be as good and that'll be what happens. And I think that maybe what's happened a wee bit, Derek, is you know, lack of bodies in, lack of bodies out, especially out, um, and then the whole debacle with the stadium and everything else. People have just got a wee bit unhappy elsewhere, and it's projected onto the business we've actually done, which I still maintain is is good business and and is is a good profile and things to be going for. So I'm still happy with that, Derek. I'm I'm still looking forward to seeing these guys play. I'm looking forward to seeing Connor Barron midfield. He was somebody you and I sat and spoke about last December. March, everything we, we spoke about him regularly, didn't we? Yep. So he's somebody that, that we're looking forward to seeing, and by all accounts, he he done well against Ajax and things like that. And I do think he'll bring that energy and brightness, shove him in next to Diamandi and things like that. Then yeah, um I think that I think that um we're we're looking okay in regards to the bodies we brought in. It's, business isn't finished, absolutely not. No. Um, we need a lot more. I still think we need another half dozen in and another six to eight out the door. So there's a lot of work to be done in the coming weeks, Derek. But I remain quietly confident that work will be done. Yes, it's slow at the moment, but um, I, I know what we're trying to do and I know what we want to do. So with that in mind, I'm, I'm quietly confident on that. Okay, right. There's been a, a, a host of questions being fired in. Uh, first of all, uh, Andrew gets in touch. <laughs> uh, Stevie, uh, uh, Andrew says, I just joined the WhatsApp group. Thank you for doing this. Much appreciated. Yet, yeah, uh, you can join uh, the Ranger Review WhatsApp group, folks. The link is in the, the description below. Stick that in your browser uh, and it should uh, uh, direct you to uh, the WhatsApp. Uh, you can keep up to date with all the latest news, all the articles in there and what have you as well. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your kind words, Andrew. Uh, just on uh, the issue of spending around four million uh, quid, James says, uh, if we're going to spend four million, I'd go for Seema. And we discussed him yesterday as well. Player wants to come, club want him to come. Issue is uh, finance at this moment in time. If Rangers can get, uh, can barter Brighton down to four million, then uh, certainly I would be uh, welcoming Abdallah back up the road. Uh, just speaking about valuations, uh, and they were not uh, in any way wanting to uh, uh, in invite offers for this boy because I think he's, uh, he was, uh, uh, he would really do well with Rangers. I thought he was uh, a real bright spark last season stevie uh, and brian gets in touch i uh, says uh, what price would you value dujon sterling at um what, what price were you a player that came in for uh, nothing from stoke city he was stoke wanted to sign him permanently that last summer uh, rangers enticed him up to ibrox uh dujon sterling stevie evaluation for him if you were to sell him I'm going to sit right on the fence and, and dodge that question because people always moan at me when I say stuff like this. Mm. But I wouldn't suggest that the value of Dujon Sterling would be as high as what people might want it until he has a sustained period of basically consistent um, yeah, availability yeah. and performance because he's constantly injured at the moment. So um, on Dujon Sterling, you would want it, Derek. You know what I mean? You would want to be sitting this time next year and be saying that he's had a, a brilliant season, really strong at right back, at centre, midfield, wherever he plays, and be saying he's a £15 million player. That's what you would want. At the moment, he's nowhere near that because he's consistently unavailable. Yeah. So, he, you know, we talk about injuries and we talk a lot about players. Dujon Sterling picks up knocks 
just as much as anyone else. So I'm hoping that with a good preseason and things like that, that he's able to to get over that. But even then, he's 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 missed the games in Holland and stuff, hasn't he? Because he had a knock. So and he's on a different kind of cycle. But that's that's a concern for me with regards to Dujon Sterling, especially if and and here's where it gets tricky for me. If you're going to sell James Tavernier, which I think I've, I've made clear, I think is the, the best thing at the moment. Yeah. I think it's maybe time for him and, and a few others to go. He's always available, Tav. Like he's always, if you suddenly become, you know, d- dependent on Dujon Sterling at right back and, and he has the same injury record as you did last week, then, you know, you're going to need to go and pick up Lee Hodgson again to back him up. So <laughs> I would, uh, I, I'm just a wee bit slightly concerned about that. Um, Five million to eight million is probably what I would have said in my head at the moment, but I think even then that's slightly on the optimistic side because of his availability and everything else. So that's where I am with it, Derek. I would love to mm-hmm. see Dujon Sterling have a, a massively powerful season and just be available and robust and and everything. It's probably the same with Redvan on the other side. In fact, it's exactly the same. Yeah. So um, you know, Redvan actually weirdly was coming on to a game, wasn't he? Right up until that spell round about Kamarnik away, I think, when Cortez got injured. And then he got injured. Fun again, isn't it? Yeah, he got injured as well. And I thought that if he could really have kicked on for that couple of months towards the end of the season, we'd be looking at people wanting to buy him now and be looking at offers in the region of seven, eight million. So um we need a big season from both fullbacks this season. Um and I do expect Dujon Sterling to most likely start as a right back this year. Um, so we need big yeah. seasons and big availability from both. Yeah, and we haven't really seen them much. Well, did we see him? We seen him at right back at, at any point last season, and did he come on for Tav at, at one point, or was there an early cup game he played at right back? I can't recall him playing there. Uh, I'm only going to guess this because I can't remember slightly, but I'm sure he started Morton at home. Um, yeah. in that two one game at right back, and everybody was going crazy about his deliveries because he got to the byline a number of times and then was whizzing it over. So I seem to remember that being a theme, and then obviously we went we went a goal down, things got kind of changed up, didn't we? So it was only yeah. lastly because of injuries he moved into midfield and things like that. But um, yeah, I'm not sure he started too many at right back. No. Uh, just for uh, Shona who gets in touch, uh, who can't see the, the WhatsApp linked, uh, here is a, I've just stick it in the comments, uh, Shona, for you. So if you click that, uh, that should uh, take you to uh, the WhatsApp group there. Right. Uh, let's get to some more points that are coming in. This one, and a lot of uh, viewers are uh, messaging in with regards to this. Uh, and apologies, there was a few yesterday that I missed. Uh, Aldo says, Derek or Stevie, any news on Raskin's injury before she left the match at the weekend in a moon boot which uh, wasn't visually wasn't uh, the best it's fair to say you always feel the worst when, when you see players in that uh, hopefully it's uh, more precautionary than anything else it was a, a rash challenge from the Ajax boy on Raskin whether he features at the weekend against Man United I'm not too sure um, let's just hope it's not a serious injury Stevie yeah, um, I'm waiting on something on that, Derek, so I won't say too much about it. But um, mm. um, I don't think you'll see him at the weekend, but we'll just need to wait and see until we get clarification on that. Yeah. These things, uh, I mean, we talk about the, the injury situation last season and Clement did say that the personnel changes have been made in, in the department, but for th- challenges like this, you can't factor that in, can you? But when... Uh, these sort of contact injuries, rash challenges in pre-season, uh, it's not the best, is it? No, it's not. And we were fairly unlucky last year with the amount of injuries we actually picked up during games and stuff as well. When you think about Danilo, you know, Danilo's two challenges yeah. on Danilo that cost him the best part of his season. Um, or three, you know, four, I can't five, with one. Almost all of it, you know what I mean? And yeah. we, we've had a lot of bad challenges on that. So, yeah, I mean, Raskin's That's just... Raskin's that type of player that would, you know, would be so busy that he does get involved in so many kind of um, tackles where you try and win the ball back, like ball recovery tackles and things like that. And I can see why he might he might be on the end of a couple of kicks and things like that as well. I think Conor Barron is probably the same type of player where he would be involved in in, uh, 
in a lot of them as well. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's disappointing to see him get injured, but um, I, I'm not worried about it being, you know, a six-month job or anything. I'm quite relaxed about yeah. it. We'll get an update. Uh, of course, we'll be at the game uh, on Saturday. I think Joshua is covering the match for us, folks. So we'll get an update from the manager on what the extent of the injury is. Now let's move on to uh, another question that's come in, an interesting one here from uh, Who Cares? He says, uh, could we give Lawrence a year extension on a contract? Because if not, we need to sell. Um, I don't think uh, Tom Lawrence will be getting this. <laughs> <laughs> If that's you, Tom, then uh, good to have you tuning in on this uh, Thursday morning. Tom Lawrence won't be getting a new deal, Stevie. And uh, But again, he's one of a number of players at the club that is on a, a hefty wage. And it's going to be a struggle finding a club that's going to match that. And he's, I mean, listen, I don't blame him if he's happy just sticking around at Rangers. Uh, he was a player I was really excited uh, when he initially signed. Unfortunately, his injury sustained. Talking about injuries there, that the... the uh, the injury sustained against Ross County, I think, uh, August a couple of years ago, has put paid to uh, his Ibrox career pretty much. You've seen, you've seen in flashes what he can give you, but uh, not enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th- I would just... He has to leave. The, the thought of giving a year extension just because we cannot get rid of him just terrifies me to my very mm. core, to be honest, like that. If he walks away at the end of his contract for nothing, then fine. I'm not even in the remotely bit um, bothered at all. This is a problem, and I'm going to sound like a moaning, greeting-faced guy that sits and repeats his record, but there's a reason why guys like Ben Davies and Tom Lawrence and everybody else that's floating about, probably Kieran Dowell and guys like that, come up here and are quite happy to sit and not even bothered if they don't play. And this is a problem with the squad. When your squad is so full of average players that are just sitting about on top money, then there's nobody pushing anybody, Derek. Like Tom Lawrence, it doesn't matter to Tom Lawrence if he plays or not, because he's you know he's 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 capable. Tom Lawrence, you know he's capable of moments. Like, is he really that good enough? No, not really. If he was getting ten grand a week, you'd be quite happy with him sitting there in the squad, wouldn't you? Yeah, and he would be fine to come in and play in some games. But Tom Lawrence, to me, he isn't the answer in regards to you know what we were where we need to go and things like that. So. No, I'm not giving Tom Lawrence any sort of extension. I would I would be selling Tom Lawrence and a number of other players in this squad. No no offense to them. And they're quite entitled to sit tight and, you know, enjoy their contracts and stuff like that. But when you see the the discussions around Sam Lammers and, you know, being on thirty grand a week and, and all sorts of stuff and he's refusing to go anywhere, then Rangers need to to make sure that this situation doesn't happen again. It can't we need a complete root branch kind of um, re rescheduling of our of our whole squad and, and finances and everything else because you know there's too many average players sitting about getting too much money and it doesn't push. Then you've got the first team players aren't getting pushed because they're not hungry enough to get in the first team. And you know the guys that are backing up should be your Egan at Manis, your your Encialas, your stuff like that, your Connor Barnes. All these boys should be the ones that are pushing the first team guys who need to stay yeah. in the team to get their wages and all. That. And it's just at the moment. You know, I don't think there's incentive enough for, for these players in our team because they're getting their money and they're going home with anyway. And that's why none of them are in any rush to leave. So, no, I'm sorry. Um, Tom Lawrence, a year extension. A hard no on that one. Oh, no, it's not even a hard no, Derek. It's way beyond <laughs> a hard no. Well, just, just off the back of that, just what you're talking about there, Stevie, uh, Denzel with their point. Sorry. Off the back of that, it says, uh, does Stevie think this season is coming... Uh, coming is uh, inevitably turning into one of transition. Not saying that we won't compete, but being away from Ibrox plus the squad status, what else can it be? Uh, it's a, probably a, a view shared by many uh, about heading into this season, Stevie. A bit of trepidation, it's fair to say, about uh, the changes, not only with the squad, but playing at Hamden is not ideal for how long, who knows. Um, but I don't think we're going to be thrown in the till uh, before a ball has been kicked. But uh, Rangers up against it, do you think? Yeah, I think we're certainly up against it at this moment in time. But things can change quite quickly, Derek. Mm. I think if we were about to go into the last day of the transfer window and we were sitting here like this, then, yeah, I would be saying that I think we're up against it. It's going to be a transition kind of season. What I would say is, and there's a part of me, 
that thinks we'll need to batten down the hatches a wee bit and there needs to be a siege mentality to get through the first maybe yeah. quarter or so of the season because I think it will be quite bumpy. I think especially as as Denzel says, being away from Ibrox and and being um maybe, you know, away from there for, for a wee bit of time period of time and having to play games and then having to bed in a squad and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that can be problematic, definitely. I think it can be. So there's a part of me that's kind of bracing myself a wee bit for that. Mm-hmm. We need to get through the first four or five games of the league and we need to be as relatively unscathed as we can. Yeah. And that's going to be difficult. But we just we just have to do it. Like we can't throw in the towel and say it's all right, it's going to be a transition, you know, we'll we'll comfortably get second or we'll be, you know, let's focus on battling hearts for some we can't talk like that. We need to concentrate on on aiming to be as successful as we can. And yeah, there needs to be a wee bit of a siege mentality at the start, you know, where we just get through the first couple of months and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm not willing to just throw in the towel. And yes, listen, at this moment in time, I think squad-wise and all that, I can understand why people are, are fed up and looking at it that way, Derek. But, you know, bookmark this or do whatever you want to do. We're on the 18th of July. The squad at this moment in time will not be the same it will not be remotely close to the same on the last day of the transfer window. So there's movement to come, and I remain kind of focused on that. And let's see what the next few weeks bring. And I think that once that starts to happen, once movement hopefully starts to happen, I think people will be more confident about what we're watching. Yep, uh, good question. Thanks for that, uh, Denzel. Uh, this is an interesting one from Moose. He gets in touch. Uh, based on what we need this summer, if you could sign three SPFL players this window, who would they be? Um, right. So uh, Lennon Miller would be what uh, Miller would be one for me. Uh, another one would be I like David Watson from Kilmarnock. Uh, I'm discounting Celtic. Um, so other than that, uh, Miofsky. There's my three, Stevie. Watson, Miller, Shankland. Mm, scored last night, of course. His hearts were thumped by Tottenham uh, at Tyne Castle. Uh, the Shankland one, it's, uh, is that what Rangers... I mean, the heavy talk about him in the winter transfer window uh, at the start of summer. Uh, everyone was saying get, still get Shankland in. Uh, could, you see that, uh, could you see that one happening, Stevie, realistically? No. no. So there you go. I think if, if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. I think it's such yeah. an obvious one that should have, you know, if there was any interest and if we had wanted to, then it would have happened by now. But that doesn't mean that, you know, the question was, who would you sign your three? Yeah. I quite like the boy at Dundee as well, the boy in midfield. I thought he was fairly decent against us. Yeah. yeah. And I'd be tempted to look at these boys. And, and because of, you know, and, and listen... Without without sounding funny, there's maybe a right back somewhere that we can get that could back up, that could be steady, and you know, what I mean, Rangers teams like look at Kurt Broadfoot for example, right? Um, wasn't the best technical player, but attitude, application, always available. It's guys like that you need in your squad, right, to be able to to win leagues and do things. And I'm sure that if I properly looked and went through the lists and everything else, then yeah. And, and Mayovsky is a good chance, but I'm just discounting the fact that you need to deal with Aberdeen and stuff. I know, like that. I know. And I don't like dealing with wee teams when it goes to signing players and all that. So I'd rather just avoid that. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't want anything to do with them. But Liam Miller, um, sorry, um, Lennon Miller from Motherwell yeah. um, is, a, is, a, is my first second, third choice. I think he's fantastic. I think, you know, £3 million is an investment absolutely for us, but if we could find a way then, yeah. I really like Lauren Shankland. I don't I don't really care what, what anybody says or, or thinks about it. He would rattle in 20 goals for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and he would be a nightmare because he'd be slow and we'd moan and we'd hate it. It'd be like Chris Boyd, Mark too, Stevie. Yeah. Like, and you'd be like, Shankland hasn't touched the ball in 30, and by oh, 35, he, 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 he will have scored, and nobody really cares ultimately. So it would be really great if we could find, you know, the ways to to, to get these kind of players in, because I think they're important. And, you know, um, it would be lovely to find another Kenny Miller, for example, within Scotland somewhere, because, again, Kenny Miller was sensational for Rangers, and some of his, like, I think he had about 19 spells, and 
some of the the, the play here was was incredible. One so that season yeah. where he left and went to Bursaspor at, at kind of January time, I think yeah, he had, had nearly goal. 20, twenty goals. You know what I mean? And he was yeah. absolutely sensational. Some of the the goals he was scoring as well was was incredible. So Kenny Miller was a guy I really liked. Um, and that's the kind of player you have to unearth, isn't it? That's the kind of guy you have to find. You need the stable squad guys. You're like your yeah. broad foots. Like, hey, did he growing up, Derek? You always had guys like Alex Cleland, for example, right? Who could always fill in, who were always available, always six, seven out of tens, and always yep. performed really well. Not massive mistakes, and I'm sure they made mistakes from time to time, but you know, they were always available, could always fill in. These are the kind of guys that we need in our squad instead of guys like we've got now who are getting 30 grand and don't really care if they're playing or not. We need the guys in there that are really bursting a gut to want to play, to want to improve and 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 know what it means and, and understand what it's like to play for a club like Rangers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Big fan Alex Leyland at Rangers. Never let, I love that. Was great. Great. It was, you could rely on up until you come up against uh, Juventus, boasting the likes of uh, Del Piero, Viali, Ravinelli, and the likes. Uh, but that aside, he was uh, he was a top drawer. I was a big fan of him. Uh, questions coming out. Uh, potential players that we'd like to see at Rangers. William White says, uh, what about Armstrong? Uh, this is Danny Armstrong. Uh, Bolton are very keen on uh, Danny Armstrong. So that would be a, a real coup for them if, if they can pull that one off. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, decent enough player. Uh, again, it would have to it would have to be a deal that, that works for Rangers. I don't necessarily think he would uh, improve the first team a great deal. But, but in terms of that problematic right wing position, uh, I think you would be a, a decent option out there. And just staying with the Bolton theme, Maka gets in touch. Says you're looking forward to seeing the number 37 playing for Bolton, Derek. Yes, I am, Maka. Uh, cannot wait to see uh, the old salute uh, being uh, uh, displayed once again. So, yeah, very much looking forward to seeing Scott Arfield uh, once more. A um, couple of points before we wrap up uh, today's show. Uh, Stuart Balmer with a point here. He says, uh, realistically, Stevie, what players will be sold? Because I very much doubt we're getting rid of Lammers. Someone asked me this the other day. I think it was on a Q&A show. And I said the players, probably realistically, you're, you're selling, said, uh, or, or, or getting rid of or, on loan, perhaps. Dessers, Lammers, Hadji. Uh, I said Lawrence Cantwell, Golton, Tavernier. Do you yeah. agree with that, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah. There's probably more in there as well. Um yeah. Adam Adam put up a thing. I wonder if I could find Adam's post, which had oh, the squad. squad. Yeah. We had the, the squad and I kind of went through it and it was horrifying to look at, but it gave you a better idea, right? Okay, so um yeah, Ben Davies, Goldson, yeah, Avenir, Dowell. Um, Lawrence, Cantwell, Hadji, Lammers, Scott Wright, yep. question marks over Rabbi Matondo, maybe, but yeah, mm. Serial Dessers, if you wanted to really argue it, but he wouldn't be my first out the door, I think, in pecking order. I think, like, genuinely, you could name 10 players that you yeah. wouldn't you wouldn't be overly upset with. And I know people are saying it's doubtful that we'll get rid of this one and that one. Like, I don't think the market's moving yet. So um I would be I would be not unhappy to see any of those go, Derek. I, I still I still think there will be movement. I still think big players will leave um in the coming weeks. So I think there's work to be done. Yeah, totally agree. Uh and we'll round off uh, with this. Uh just a play we were just discussing there, Stevie Connor Barron Ross says, uh, have you been impressed with Connor Barron so far? Do you think he's ready to play every week domestically for us? Um he does have a lot of experience domestically, of course, with uh, Aberdeen. The manager did, uh, it was interesting when he says that Enciala and Igaman uh, weren't ready to uh, step in and sort of play immediately. But the likes of uh, Barron, I think you said Jeff Day as well, were, were ready to come in uh, and feature from the off. Um, how much do you think they'll play this season, Stevie? Well, ideally for me, Connor Barron would be pushing a first choice number six. To play and he would play quite a lot of game time but not necessarily start every game that's where i would pitch him but Connor baron could easily be somebody that impresses so much that he does play on a week-to-week -week basis so i think Connor baron has got room to impress us with his performance levels and i think he's capable of that 
Um, I think he's a busy player. I think he's got lots of energy. I think he could do well for us, and he's a player that I'm really glad he's here and somebody that I wanted in. So is he ready to play domestically every week for us? Yeah. I mean, he's got experience in Scotland, doesn't he? So I think he is. Yeah. Whether or not I would want him to play, I'm not so sure. Um, I do think that he's the type of player that can really help Diamandi. I do think he's the type of player, Derek, that will get a lot of game time. Do you want him really to be your first choice, number six? I think he would have to prove that. Yeah. I think he's capable. How do I say it? I definitely capable, but I need to be convinced that he's he's ready to do that. I think in yeah. time, and think in time, genuinely, I think in time he, he will settle to be a really strong player for us. But I'm reluctant as such to to put. I mean, do I think that Jeffy would come in and start ahead of Red Van and stuff like that as well? It's the same kind of position, isn't it? Or not the same mm-hmm. position in the squad, but it's the same type of question. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. The good thing about that is, right, Conor Barron could play at the moment, but I genuinely think with him, there's, there's room to grow and massively improve. Oh, massively. He's a really solid and really impressive player for us. So that's where I am with it, Derek. Hopefully that kind yeah. of explains it a wee bit. Yep. Uh, thanks for the question, Ross. And thank you to each and every one of you for uh, tuning in and for uh, getting your questions. And apologies, folks, if I've never uh, got to uh, your point that you want uh, me and Stevie's response to. But uh, yeah, thank you. Anyway, those of you that are uh, extra uh, subscribers, I uh, spoke to Yaz, who is an editor of Man United Zone, a uh, big publication on Twitter and Instagram uh, about Saturday's friendly and what we can expect from Man United and what their expectations are. Uh, for the season ahead, what sort of players we can expect to see at Murrayfield at the weekend? Are you going, Stevie? Yeah, it should be. Should be. I'm a busy man, Derek. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> how do you how do you see it going? I mean, it's a, it'll be a good workout for uh, the team. A bit. Uh, man United, I'd imagine, will be playing some of their big hitters. Um, but what what do you see happening there? It'd be good to see a good man. Um, yeah, well, you know, I'll go along and expect what I always do, you know, 4 0 to Rangers who are Man United kind of yeah. thing. So, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, but uh, yeah. listen, I think it's what's more important genuinely is that we get a wee bit of the feel good factor back. Yeah, I think we're really all struggling at the moment. Um, so let's see what the, the weekend brings. I wasn't too impressed with some people to Nyat's game, looked like some are going through the motions. Mm. whether or not that's because in my mind I've made up my mind on certain things and I'm looking at players and thinking yeah you're just kind of going through the motions with it you know hand up not really caring about free kicks being taken need I say more that kind of thing so yeah I'm looking for brightness I'm looking for positivity I'm looking for some good football I'm looking to start seeing some kind of shape and resemblance under Philip Clement and I know that's really difficult when he's got players that he doesn't want to be there and players that he still wants to come in. But I am yeah. looking for just generally a wee bit of encouragement. Yes, results don't matter in pre-season, but when you look at last pre-season and our defeats and our performances, I think it would be nice to really see some encouragement and something that we can take into the, the coming weeks because, you know, Birmingham next away, next midweek, um, and you're looking for the same. You know, a few start to get the, the goals in, start to get some feeling... You know, players getting 90 minutes, players getting 75 minutes, that kind of thing, Derek. So you're just looking for a, a build-up and a continuation of, of pre-season. But for us, I think we need to find a, a feel-good factor somewhere. Yeah, I'd like to see that also. Right, that'll do us there, folks. Uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, we'll speak to you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bye for now.